Hello, welcome back. I'd like to point out that right now we're doing this kind of JRPG sort of menu-based thing. That's not probably how it's going to end up, but we do need to build these fundamentals in order to build out the rest of the game. So even though we are building what appears to be a very static menu, what we're going to end up doing is probably these things are going to be floating in the game world. They're not going to be turn-based, or if they are turn-based, they might be real-time turns, like, you know, um, KOTOR. Anyhow, uh, I just wanted to make sure everyone realizes that we're not building an old-school JRPG. This isn't a top-down thing, uh, and it's going to be in a 3D, and it's probably going to have action elements. I haven't really decided yet. It depends on how it goes. With that said, today we're going to build a little bit of the battle system. The reason that I mentioned all that stuff is because the battle is going to be a little bit... Um, uh, awkward. And the reason is because we're not creating a static battle idea. We don't have the idea of a battle nailed down just yet, so we don't really know how it'll work out in the long run. But we can program some of the basic functionality as a placeholder, as a scaffold. So in this case, we'll go ahead and just drop our battle object into the low menu mockup. Here it is. And then we will pull up a battle. So we're going to want to add a couple of uh, a couple of things to this battle. First off, we need a generic namespace, and that's because we're going to use some lists. Now, in all honesty, we don't have any need for enemies yet, so let's just go ahead and comment comment that out for the moment. So when we have these heroes pulled up, what we're going to be doing is here in start, we're going to be spawning all of the things we need for those heroes. So what we're going to do is a lot of the stuff we put in the battle unit, we're going to be moving over into the battle. And that includes most of this stuff here. We don't need the battle status. And over here in the battle unit, we only need the battle status. And this stuff we move over into the battle. So battle status prefab is not actually, we're going to have to change this later, but that's okay. We can live with it as it is now, uh, and then just continue building out on this scaffold that we're creating. So in here we go uh, uh, heroes. We can either grab all of the heroes or we can assign them. For now I'm going to go ahead and, and just assign them. Uh, so in order to assign them, we'll have to do some mucking about over here, but first I do have to make this compile. If it doesn't compile, then I won't be able to do anything. So uh, A lot of people have been, uh, not a lot of people, several people have said that when I do for int a equals zero, a is less than heroes.count a plus plus, a lot of people have pointed out that this is not the most ideal um, way to do things. This for loop is a lot less uh, efficient than doing a for each, but it's also a lot more flexible because if you're doing a for each, you'll probably run into errors on accident if you try and modify something without really realizing what you're doing. Uh, if you're doing a for each, you're not allowed to change how many heroes there are, the order of the heroes, you're not allowed to delete the heroes or add heroes. So uh, I almost always use a for loop. The if you're trying to optimize, the biggest thing you can do is not use a linked list. Arrays are just flat out faster. I'm not even talking about like a little bit faster. They are a massive amount faster. They are even more efficient than if you were to, uh, sorry, recreating and reassigning an array is actually faster than adding an object to the end of a linked list. That's how much faster arrays are. So really, if you're going to try and optimize things, the best optimization you can do is stop using linked lists. But they're very, very, uh, very, very easy to use, and um, you know we're not doing anything particularly processing intensive here, so they'll work fine. So that should compile. Yep, good. We go over here and uh, take a look at our hero list. It's empty at the moment, so let's drop Anne and Bob into it. 
And uh, well, of course, we're going to need to reassign all of those prefabs and such. So let's just go ahead and do that. And now when we hit play, oh, they overlap. You can see how they still overlap uh, even now. It's no biggie, because now we have the power to make them not overlap. This is another reason I often like the uh, for loops, is simply because it's a lot easier to tell uh, how many objects have gone by. But again, it's not a big deal. Here, offset min, what we're going to want to do is, I think, add something to the y value. So, Is 30 going to be enough? No, no, I need to add 70. The portrait is 64 pixels high. That's kind of how I'm remembering it. Well, that didn't work out at all, now did it. Ah, good. However, it needs to be a negative 70. There we are. Anne Hero and Bob Hero are now nicely lined up. Uh, later on, we'll be tweaking it. We'll probably be, be narrowing them. I think 64 pixels is a little bit too tall. We might go down to maybe 40 pixels. It doesn't have to be a power of 2 anymore. That's that's really a 3D skinning thing. You, you don't really have to worry about that for things like portraits. Anyhow, that said, all of this stuff works as expected. You may notice that the... Um, these sliders, they don't resize quite right. That's because they've got a weird set of pads built into them and it resizes funny. And that's the big reason we're going to have to use something else of our own creation. But that's still a ways off. Um, there's no reason to fix it at this point because what we're going to end up creating is an in-world floating thing and uh, there's no reason to try to do that right now. So, all of that done, we can go ahead and change some of the stuff. Let's make Bob our wizard, so we'll give him 40 HP um, out of 45, and we'll give him 60 out of 200 MP. There we are. Bob Hero and An Hero are now different. Obviously, if you want, you can add in a text representation. Um, I'm going to add all that stuff later, because it's all going to be coming together uh, when we need it on the actual game map. I'm not going to polish this interface because it's a placeholder. All right, I think that that was a pretty short episode. I'm not entirely sure. Either way, uh, we got a fair amount done. We've just moved all of that spawning into the battle handler, and that's how it's going to end up working for most of the menus. Uh, the battle itself is a kind of a menu-aware activity. It knows what to spawn and when to spawn it, and, uh, and that will be the core of the situation, assuming that we go with this kind of pop-up turn-based battle thing. But for now, that is a representation of how it will happen. Even if we do go with other kinds of activities, when you go to like uh, you know the party menu and you have to choose status, inventory, equip, magic, um, that will be very similar to this. It will have a, a menu that understands how to spawn other menus and how to despawn those menus. We'll get to that later.